All right. Everyone, for logging on our fourth Tuesday of the month, which is our active evening calls. Uh, we appreciate all those that presented so far this month. You know, Coco, you hosting um, our testimonial call. Uh, we had Susie Boyd, who, who gave a great presentation on following a plan and executing that, and she gave good concrete examples of it. And so, you know, we've been filled so far for the first month of 2022. Um, and we had a great active school last week in which um, Trisha Albertson and Claudina Brenneman um, shared some um, wonderful insights um, about making, creating, and executing a plan. Um, so with all of that knowledge on the how to do and what to do, um, David Brown, our lovely CEO, is going to be our presenter tonight. And he has a very interesting topic, which I know a lot of you um, either or heard about it before um, and want to know more about it. And so it's been a hot topic um, among U.S. distributors and is a hot topic we here at corporate um, discuss internally as well as what we hear from a lot of you. Um, and that is talking about um, NERF2. And the NERF2 activation, what it does, what does our company, unlike other companies, also have, and I mean, that do not have, um, which is a key um, that um, David has, has tirelessly um, looked into to offering the best products um, on the market, not just in network marketing, but also um, industry-wide as far as, you know, the supplement industry, health and wellness industry. So we're grateful for um, what he, Angie, Ryan, the rest of the team does in, in bringing forth um, these things. And so tonight, David will be talking and I will let him introduce um, his topic, by the way. Um, but please take notes. As I said, this is being recorded because I know a lot of you will want to listen to this later on as well. So um, rest assured that it's recorded and please, uh, for those who couldn't make it on your team, this is gonna be a very interesting um, and educational piece to share um, with those in your downline. So I turn the time over to a lovely CEO, David Brown. Thanks, Stu. Hey everybody, good to see you all tonight. Thanks for joining us. It's uh, great to be with you. Um, we're going to discuss some, uh, some kind of interesting things tonight, I think, and um, it's going to be a, a little bit of a walk down memory lane for some of you. We're going to review some, uh, some things that maybe you've seen in the past. We're going to talk about some things you probably haven't and hopefully provide a little bit more clarity into um, the importance of NERF2 and specifically really how lucky we are to have the world's most potent NERF2 activator with us in genomics and, uh, and specifically talking about a couple of studies that have been published. One um, just published on, the, on January 10th. Now I alluded to it and referred to it a little bit in active school, but I wanna get into it a little bit more in detail because I think not that we all need to become um, junior scientists, but uh, specifically if somebody, there are, there are often, um, I think questions that people raise and say, okay, what does genomics do? Uh, what's the elevator pitch? We're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. We're gonna to talk about criticisms and objections that people might have a little bit saying, oh, this is just bogus, you know, this and that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But to begin with, um, I want to share my screen. I wonder if any of you have ever seen this. Now, some of you know that uh, we, we raised our kids in, in San Diego. And um, every so often, not, not quite every year, and every once in a while, more than once a year, we would get what would call the red tide. Okay, the red tide is, um, uh, was when the, there was a, a kind of an algae bloom and trillions, I don't know how many microorganisms um, would, would be in the water uh, during certain um, temperature cycles. And, and what happened is that they were bioluminescent. So at night, when there was movement in the water, when the waves broke, um, they were they would glow. It's really cool, all right. And um, and lots of little kids would go to the beach and they'd get a they'd get a jar full of water, take it home, and um, and they would go into the bathroom, turn off the lights, get their brothers and sisters in there, and shake it up and and see how the uh, the water glowed. You know, and it's interesting that uh, they didn't really know how or why the water glowed. They just knew that when they shook the water. Uh, sh shook, shook it in the bottle that it glowed. And uh, that's kind of how originally um, the, the science behind oxidative stress 
um, was, was developed. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So um, I want to go to the next thing. This is going to be familiar to a lot of you. And don't worry, we can talk about this. We're going to bring it up and, and actually play a little bit of it. Actually, Angie or Stu, let me know if this is going to play. Are you able to hear this? No sound, David. No sound. What have I got to do to do yeah. that? There's a, a little button at the when you click on share and it brings up what you want to share. There's a button at the bottom that says share sound. So just make sure that's clicked when you before you click the share the second time. Got it. Okay, I need there's something I was missing. Okay. Longer science fiction, but science possibility, a potential this. breakthrough. As I found out firsthand, there may be a way to erase years, at least inside my body. Granted, it's down the road, but some scientists are wondering if a new pill I took might offer a very long life. It may not look like the fountain of youth, but inside this nondescript building, I'm about to become part of an exciting experiment. A kind of guinea pig. Dr. McCord, okay. I'm here at the University of Colorado in Denver to meet Dr. Joe McCord, a world-renowned scientist. This is uh, pretty exciting stuff you're finding, huh? It is. We're very excited about it. His latest research could very well unravel the mystery of aging itself. And as decades of experiments may have the potential of adding years to people's lives and possibly prevent chronic diseases like cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. It all centers around this small yellow pill. And for me, it begins with a blood test. Here, can I scoop? Yeah, there we go. It wouldn't be the first time I've given blood for this company. <laughs> They want to check my levels of something called T-bars, which is a rough indicator of a person's actual age. T-bars can identify a condition known as oxidative stress, a kind of measure of the wear and tear on our bodies. Oxidative stress, like the rusting of an engine, is not a good thing. Bad for the body. Leading to disease. Leading to disease and leading to malfunction and importantly, leading to what we call aging. It is a slow progression of increasing oxidative stress. That's the main characteristic biochemically of the aging process. The problem of aging begins with the very food we eat to give us energy. As our cells burn that food, they also release toxic chemicals. Those chemicals, you may know them as free radicals, react with all the components of our cells, literally bombarding them millions of times per second, damaging all our cells. The result? Oxidative stress and we all have it. The body fights back with a system of defenses. It makes two antioxidant enzymes, catalase and SOD, whose job is to gobble up the free radicals before they can harm our cells. But as we get older, some of those toxic radicals overwhelm our enzymes and wreak their havoc. For a long time, scientists thought that antioxidant vitamins like C and E would lower it, but they don't. As it's turned out in just the last five years or so, we see that they're not good enough tools. They're not powerful enough. So I, I didn't put that on full screen because I was just going to stop it for a second. What was interesting there is Dr. McCord, and many of you have seen that many times, is uh, talking about the development of what later became known as protandum. And, um, and you notice there was never, in, you might recall, in that whole, it goes on for 10 minutes or 12 minutes, there was never any mention of Nerf 2 in that entire piece. Why? Because they didn't know anything about Nerf 2 back then. Um, if, if you listen to it more often, a little bit more, you'd hear that, doc, that uh, John Quinones, the commentator, says that uh, the body produces two enzymes, catalase and, S and SOD. Well, we know that the body produces a lot more enzymes than catalase and just S and SOD. We, it talks about the effect upon T-bars. And like, it, like my uh, daughter or son that shook the bottle of bioluminescent water and watched it glow, it just knew that if you shook it, that my child just knew that if you shook it, it glowed. Um, Dr. McCord and his colleagues back then knew that if you took protandum, um, it reduced T-bars, but they didn't really know how or why, but now they know a lot more. And so we know, and what's really interesting is that the, up, up to that point, 
the best scientific research seemed to indicate that the best way to fight this oxidative stress, this damage by free radicals, was by antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E. And the very last part of that thing that Dr. McCord said before I shut it off was that they weren't powerful enough tools, right? And then now we know that um, because, so that was, that aired in 2005, fast forward to 2022, and we know that um, that product that he produced to be more powerful, to, to increase the body's own production of, of antioxidant enzymes and other things, also turned out not to be powerful enough. And that's why he went on and created a more powerful version. And we're gonna talk more about that. In fact, this study um, talk, talks about that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring up the study that was done. And, um, and I marked it up a little bit. We're gonna mark, we're gonna go through it a little bit. Uh, it was published by uh, something called Litson Publishing. You might notice that if you look at it, this is open. You might wonder what that means. Well, that's a new type of thing now with um, with the internet. It makes it makes journals, scientific research, much more accessible, much more much more accessible not only for scholars and scientists who want to publish their studies, but also for people to access it generally for free, um, as opposed to of subscribing, if they're even qualified to, to a, to a very expensive scientific journal uh, published by an, an institution. Now, um, this is one of the criticisms that somebody might bring if you ever show it to them. They say, oh, open access. We all know that those journals are terrible. They have no standards. They are sometimes referred to as predatory, which means that they, they kind of dupe scientists to participate by saying, well, if you pay us a certain amount of money, we'll publish your article, but they don't provide any type of peer review. They don't have other scientists reviewing the results. They don't do things like that. And so there's criticism. But I can tell you this journal is a very well-respected journal that's, that is subject to all of the standards of and, 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 and is a member of the various organ, publishing organizations. And so uh, and you can imagine that Dr. McCord and Dr. Hybertson and Dr. Yao are not going to submit their, their work to a journal that is not of the highest quality and which is gonna open them up to criticism. And so indeed they didn't. So this is a very, a very, well, a, a, a very positive journal called OBM Integrative and Complementary, Complementary Medicine. Now I've, I've looked at, I've um, set this up and marked it up a little bit. And uh, what's interesting, if you say, okay, it, it refers to PB-123 and its effect upon NERF-2 activation. That's good. Gene expression, that's good. And the cholesterol, and the cholesterol pathway in HEPG2 or liver uh, cells. Now, if there's ever any um, confusion about whether 123 is, is genomics or not, look down here in this first part that refers to the abstract and it talks about the, the ingredients. Um, Sylvia rosemarinus, which is rosemary, gingerbread officinale, which is ginger, and Sephora japonica, which is uh, our source of luteolin, and, and is the 123 supplement. Now look at what it says it does. Just in short order, it says that they wanted to evaluate the activation of nerve 2 and, and, the, and the gene expression in these cells that have been treated with 123. And look at the primary effects, increasing the nerve 2 pathway, decreasing the cholesterol biosynthesis or the creation of cholesterol. Um, and it talks, and it, then it talks about how it does that with cytoprotective genes, genes that protect our cells, cyto means, means cells, and increases our cellular defenses um, against oxidative stress that they induce, that they created on the cells themselves. And so they can talk about how they upregulate the, the immune system protect, protective uh, genes and downregulate these cholesterol genes. But look at this. If you wanna say, if, if people ask you, what is genomics? You can take it from the scientists themselves and say it is a health span pr promoting dietary supplement. Isn't that great? It promotes a, a, more, a healthier health span. Then it gets into aging. You know, in that ABC primetime piece, they talked about aging. This is one thing that the science hasn't changed on, although we know a lot more about it. The, age, the primary cause of aging, oxidative stress. Our cellular defenses go down, even as the threats against our health increase as we get older. 
And so it, you know, and it has a little bit of discussion here about for a long time, people thought that if we just ate certain things that were high in antioxidants, that we could make a difference. And we found that that's not the case. That the body has what's called indigenous or inside the body protection mechanisms that can activate these defenses. So then it gets into what NERF2 is. What does it do? Well, it regulates um, a wide variety of these protective genes. And what's interesting is that it, what it does is it activates at the very genetic inside the gene, um, there are these antioxidant responsive elements or ARE. But what they do, they regulate. So, so if you say that, well, NERF2 is up here, it talks to ARE and ARE then talks to other, other uh, genes that are antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and cytoprotective genes. So again, if people say, well, what does genomics do? It reduces oxidative stress, reduces inflammation and protects our, and protects our cells. That's pretty good. If we can do, if we can do all of those things, um, if every day you can decrease oxidative stress, decrease infl inflammation and protect your cells, you've had a pretty good day. So make sure that you and, <laughs> you and your friends are taking genomics every day. And it, again, it talks about what aging is composed of, okay? Lower levels of, of NERF2 have been associated with advanced age. However, apparently, according to the scientists, we all want to be like something called the naked mole rat. And I know that, that Stu knows all about what, whatever naked mole rats are, but apparently they live a long time. And why do they live a long time? Because they have naturally elevated levels of NERF2. So the, the hypothesis here is, if we wanna live a long time or during whatever time we have to live, we want it to be as healthy and robust as possible, we need to increase our levels of NRF2. Then they get into the, the, how they, again, how it talks about it, it protects against oxidative stress and, and high cholesterol levels. So again, now it gets into, now sometimes, are you ever met with, with uh, people who say, well, okay, great. I've heard of ginger. I've heard of rosemary. I've heard of luteolin. Um, I, I can just, you know, I don't need to take it in this form. That's expensive. I'm just going to go out and buy it. I like ginger. I'll just, you know, I'll just get it into my food. Well, the natural response to that is, well, good luck because our, our genomics is not just based upon those three ingredients. It's specific measurements of particular aspects. So for example, with ginger, it's standardized to 20% gingerols, which is a particular phytochemical um, in ginger. So you're just not gonna get that by going out and chewing on a ginger root. Uh, rosemary is standardized to 6% carnosol and 15% carnosic acid. So again, how, what's the likelihood of you getting out there and being able to accidentally eat your way to the same results that you're going to have with this? And, and the same thing with support, Sephora Japonica. Now, in terms of its measurement, they might say, well, how do you know? It talks, you talk about how it causes these genes to express and, and turn on or, 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 and, or to turn off. How do you know it does any of those things? Well, in this next part of the discussion, it talks about that. Now, look at that, what I've highlighted. NERF2 dependent firefly luciferase gene construct. You might want to say, wait a minute. I've heard of NERF2, of course. I know what fireflies are. Um, luciferase gene construct. I know what some of those words are, but when you put them all together, I have no clue what they mean. All right. Well, what it means is that with these cells, what they put into these cells is an, an enzyme called luciferase. And what, is fi what do fly fireflies have to do with it? Well, fireflies light up at night because they have the enzyme luciferase in their bodies. And so what scientists have done is they've been able to construct genes or, or, or cells that when they put it, this basically this, this enzyme containing cell on top of or kind of painting these genes, they're, they're NERF2 dependent. So in the presence of NERF2, guess what? They'll light up. Um, or if they're supposed to, or they won't light up if they're not supposed to. And so this is a, a kind of an explanation as to how that, how that goes into effect. And the ne next thing is, is really pretty interesting, is they talk about this, the, um, the, how they compared these things. I just talked about how they light up. Well, they can actually measure the amount of light in something called relative light units. 
all right? And so when they talk about synergy, they, they talk about how they treated each of the cells with combinations of the rosemary, ginger, and luteolet extracts, both individually and collectively and, and in various combinations. And then they basically measured the light emitted by, that, by um, those cells, and then they, and, and they can measure that and say, okay, well, this, this light burst was this, was this strong, this light burst was that strong, and, and so on and so forth. They can actually um, categorize it. And then though it's interesting if people say, well, what, you know, what kind of science is behind this? Well, if you wanna just blow them away, say, well, look at all these things. These are all the assays that they did. They do protein assays, you, they did cholesterol assays, they did intracellular lipid assays for other fats. They did cytoprotection assays. assays. This is hardcore science that all of you have access to. What's interesting is that, you know, when you think about where this science has come from, they've gone from basically measuring T-bars and saying, we don't know how, but if you take this product, this pill, it's gonna reduce the oxidative stress level somehow, to now getting into chapter and verse about how this goes through all of these different pathways in the bodies, in the body to do this. Now look at the results. Isn't it good to, you know, when, a long time ago, when I was first um, interviewing as a young law school graduate to, um, to um, interview with some law firms, I'd, the interviews were very interesting. I'd go to a law firm and, um, and it, the interviews would last about three hours, okay? And I would have to go from interview to interview to interview with various lawyers in the firm. And, and you'd, you'd interview with about, you know, six, eight people. And, and usually they'd ask you the same questions. Oh, what do you want to study? Why did you go into law? All this kind of stuff. Well, one time I uh, had a very interesting experience where a woman, a female lawyer said to me, you know what? I don't like to ask just normal everyday questions. Um, I wanna ask something that's kind of unusual. And I said, okay, fine. And I'd, I'd already spoken with her a little bit and I could tell she was a little bit unusual herself. And so uh, she said, okay, the question I have for you, David, is what would you say to, um, if you met an alien? Okay, and I thought to myself, okay, this is already kind of weird. She's asking, she wants to see how I'm going to respond to things like this. And so I said, well, and, and, but she doesn't know that I'm pretty weird myself. And so uh, uh, I said, immediately, I said, well, I think the answer is obvious. The first thing you say to an alien. And um, she was kind of surprised by my response. She, go, she said, well, what is the first thing you should say to an alien? I said, the very first thing you should say to an alien is please don't eat me. Because if you don't get past that, the rest of the conversation makes no sense. Okay, so the same thing is true here. The very first step, the very first thing to determine in a study is whether it's, it's toxic or not. And the first thing they discovered was PB-123 was determined to be non-toxic. I mean, after, after all, if it's toxic, it doesn't really matter what it does after that, right? So I'm glad to know, to know and you can tell everybody, is it safe? Yeah, it's totally safe. It's non-toxic. And it goes into all the, re the reasons for that. Then it talks about the, the synergy. It talks about how this combination of ingredients is synergistic. And remember, it means that synergy means that the, the sum is great, the whole is greater than the sum of the individual parts. So one plus one plus one should equal three. But if it's synergistic, it's going to equal more than three. It's going to equal four, five, 10, 20 in terms of its effect. And that's what they found with this rosemary ginger luteolin combination that the nerf 2 power created was much greater than what was than the the total of of what each individual ingredient would do by themselves and that talks about how how it arrived at that so pretty interesting stuff um, we, we talk about how it is a gene um, activator right so here it talks about well um, in this study 170 genes were increased more than twofold Okay, more than 100%. 247 genes were decreased more than 100% or twofold. And so it then goes into that and explains, and you know, it talks about the significance of that um, going forward. Now, it doesn't mean that that's all the genes that it, that it expressed um, or affected, but those are the ones that it, it affected more than, a, more than 100%. 
look at some of these things. It talks about NERF2 is one of the transcription factors that it, that it activates, but all of these things in blue are other transcription factors that it also activates. And then talks about a really interesting thing. You know that, that uh, Dr. McCord's company is called Pathways Biosciences. And the reason that they call themselves Pathways is because they've discovered, as, has, as have other scientists, that there really are pathways. There are routes into the genes, into our cells, all throughout our body, through which biochemical processes, processes occur. And so this is one in which it's talking about all the things that um, this NERF2 activation upregulation has involved. Look at some of these things. Survival signaling, that's a good gene. I'm glad we're doing that. Nuclear receptors, oxidative stress, um, zinc homeostasis, um, copper homeostasis. Um, and look how it downregulates the cholesterol biosynthesis pathway. Um, uh, all of those things that are tied together. Very fascinating. Now, what's interesting is that it says here, that the downregulation of the cholesterol pathway was so consistent, we followed up to see if it really did change cellular cholesterol levels or not. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because cholesterol, if, there, if we have too much cholesterol it, in, our, in our system and the body is not able to process and get rid of it as it should, it will build up in our arteries. And it will build up in our arter arteries and causing basically like a pipe that over time there's, there's deposits from, from you know, water deposits. And so the diameter of the pipe shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, but the water pressure then is increasing because the same amount of water is trying to get through now a much smaller pipe. And that's why um, atherosclerosis or a hardening of the arteries, how are those arteries hardening? Well, the arteries themselves aren't, but what gets stuck to the arteries are. And what's getting stuck to the arteries is cholesterol and other lipids or fats that come from our, from our diet. And so there's a couple of ways that what's really interesting about this, and some of you that remember Dr. McCord talking about this in the past, said that while cholesterol levels are important, what's also important is how much of that cholesterol or how much of those fats is being oxidized. Because when it's subjected to oxidative stress, that those lipids get a lot stickier and that's what causes them to adhere or stick to the, to the arterial walls. And so what, what, what they're now finding out, because they didn't know this then, is that this is that NERF2 is affecting the problem in two ways. Number one, it's actually affecting the genes that, that, that create the, the, the cholesterol in the first place and downregulating them. And then to the extent that cholesterol is formed, it is um, decreasing the amount of oxidative stress that that cholesterol is subject to. It's, isn't it amazing how the body operates? Now, what's also interesting about this is, you don't have to know this, but again, as it talks about how all these things are tied together, it says it increased the expression of, of the HEMOX1 gene. You might say, well, what's, what's that all about? Well, HEMOX1 is very important in terms of vascular health or art, art arterial health or, the, or your, your blood system or, and, or, and um, arteries and, and veins and, and that whole system, cardiovascular system, um, HEMOX1 is very important. And so if you can increase the expression of that, you are decreasing the inflammation that's occurring and then decreasing your chances of, of heart disease and other, other cardiovascular issues. What's interesting is that in this particular graph, it talks about how it prevented loss of cell viability following a challenge with oxidative stress. So in other words, they, sub they subjected the cells to, to increase le levels of, of, oxygen of oxidative stress. Not only did the cells not die, there was no cytotoxicity observed, so there was no toxicity observed, but they were actually strengthened and, and, and showed no Ill, Ill effects of the, of the oxidative stress. So look at this, aging has been associated with a decreased ability to respond to stress-induced changes. Well, that's also true of cardiovascular disease and every other, and basically every other disease. It's like Dr. McCord said in that um, ABC primetime video that we, just, that we just showed. And that was, again, that was first aired, I think in 2005 or 2006, but this much remains the same, that we do know that aging occurs when the body's ability, the, the body's balance of free radicals um, overtake, it, it becomes imbalanced. 
and the body's uh, losing, and the body starts losing the bottle, the battle to oxidative stress. So cell damage and cell death occurs, and when that happens, loss of function occurs. And so if you can reduce that oxidative stress, if you can reduce that inflammation, you can maintain that cellular function, and so your body is not nearly as susceptible to the age-related uh, diseases because it's not aging at the same rate that it otherwise would be. Now, here's a big, long discussion regarding why they combined more than one um, uh, ingredient to form genomics. And it talks about the complexity, how complex it is to not only create nerve 2 in the cells, but to keep it there and to keep it there in a way that doesn't uh, create toxicity. Now, what's interesting, if I would have continued playing the um, ABC primetime piece, right after Dr. McCord says that vitamins or vitamin E and vitamin C and vitamin D are not powerful enough um, antioxidants, Right after that, it goes into and it shows, you know, a bunch of yellow pills pro tandem and talks about how this is powerful enough. Well, guess what? 15, 16 years later, we know that it's not powerful enough. And this part of it is this part of this study talks about why. Because what happens is that the body is so complicated that even as we are increasing the amount of NERF2 that occurs, NERF2, if left unchecked, in, in certain ways has, can actually be, create some toxicity. So by virtue of the various ingredients, not just having one ingredient that's increasing the amount of nerve two, but the several ingredients, we are increasing nerve two and decreasing its toxicity. And so if it's toxic, the body wants to kick it out. And so by, by um, having these, these different ingredients is that, look at this, what, what appears to be another major controller of nerve two, is that there's a mechanism that ejects it from the nucleus, terminating its activity. That's what Dr. McCord found was happening with ProTandem. Yes, it was increasing the body's production of NERF2, but there, was, there were mechanisms that were ejecting it from the nucleus and it simply wasn't able to, to operate for as long as it could. And so now by virtue of having different ingredients, you, you still get the nerf 2 activation, but it's not ejected from the cell. So it can operate a longer period of time to do everything that it, that it needs to do. So it, you know, so it says they, they combine agents that act at multiple key points in the network, combined with minimal toxicity to expect a useful end result. Now, one thing it says that extensive prior work supports the beneficial effects of the individual components of, of PB-123. So when people say, well, I've heard that ginger is good for you, and I've heard that rosemary is good for you, and I've heard that Sephora japonica is good for you, what they're saying here is that you get all of the benefits that come from taking those ingredients individually. But in addition to that, you get the, the very real benefits of the synergistic behavior that would not occur if you weren't taking them together and in these and, and in the components and in the amounts that are put into genomics. And so at the bottom, the bottom line is, um, again, why is, what's the elevator pitch in terms of genomics? So it supports its use, it, it supports its use to promote um, healthy aging. It's going to upregulate antioxidant genes. It's going to downregulate inflammatory genes and it's gonna be cytoprotective. It's like armor for your cells. It's gonna make them stronger. It's gonna help them last longer. Now, sometimes people say, well, is it good to upregulate the autoimmune system all the time? And the answer is no, it's not. So you shouldn't. And guess what? That's what they're really talking about here is that it's modulating or setting it at the amount that it should be at. If it should be um, increased slightly for the, for the health threat that it's under, it will. If it's not supposed to be increased, it won't. And that's the beauty of modulation versus just straight, straight activation. So I wanna go back now to something you've seen before. I've talked about the luminescent. This is actually a previous study that they did. And I showed this at the active school. This is what under a photon microscope that looks like. They actually can see that the burst of light occurs. They can measure how much it is. And in this case, they, they confirmed once again that this is 
very powerful, the most powerful um, NERF2 activator. And that's why back when we first started this company, we had the option, which one do we want to, sh which one do we want? Do we want to take PB125? Do we want to take PB127 or PB131, PB129? Um, or do we want to have some variation on protandum? The answer was no. Why? Just look at this graph. We wanted to have the most powerful NERF2, NERF2 activator in the world for all of these benefits that were just talked about. And so at the end of the day, um, when you, you know, there's people say, well, what studies have been done? Well, this study, the one we just walked through. There's the earlier study that was done, again, on PB123 or genomics uh, that talked about um, epithelial dysfunction in HIV-1 transgenic rats. You might say, what, what good does that have to do? Well, basically, bottom line, it showed that in rats in which that they'd given HIV to and who otherwise would be, would be facing uh, severe respiratory issues, it protected the cells in the lungs. Does that have any other application? Absolutely. What's the biggest problem with people who get COVID and have terrible, and have terrible uh, results with COVID is, is their epithelial cells. Their respiratory cells become super inflamed. So if you can protect them and decrease that inflammation, it's going to have a, you're going to suffer a lot less from the effects of the virus. And so um, you've heard me use this, this word again, audacious. Isn't it interesting? Many of you have actually seen um, the ABC primetime piece that I just aired. You've seen it over the years and were amazed by it and said, man, that is unbelievable science. And you might say, David, why are you bringing this up? Well, I can tell you the, the reason I'm bringing it up is do you think that um, Elon Musk, um, who founded Tesla, do you think he worries about showing um, videos of Model T Fords? Do you think he, he worries about showing videos about 1960 Camaros um, or, or, or anything else? No, he doesn't. Because he knows that there's nothing out there that can compete with the technology of his Tesla. He doesn't care if you look at other videos. He doesn't care if you look at other cars. At the end of the day, he knows that his, his technology is superior. And that's kind of where we're at. Do I, do I mind going down memory lane and, and talking about Pro Tandem or ABC Primetime? No, I was there. I was the CEO of the company. I embraced it. I said, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it is. But it's not amazing now when I see that I can have a, a Tesla versus a, versus a, a 1954 you know, Camaro. I mean, it's no, there's no comparison to me. And, and that's where we have now with genomics. We have the latest cutting edge science with, with that answers the question. When people say, well, are there any studies? The answer is yes. What do they show? Pretty amazing stuff. And again, at the end of the day, you don't have to know all of these details. Um, the fact that they're out there, I think just simply provides us additional reassurance that when we are staking our reputation, when we are sharing these things with other people, we have um, the foundation. That foundation is in published studies by world-renowned scientists. And at the end of the day, you don't need to know anything about those pathways. You don't need to know about HEMOX-1. You don't need to know about any of those type of things. You just need to know that this might be the most powerful health span promoting supplement in the world. And that's pretty amazing. So on that note, um, class is over. Uh, it's, you've been a very good class, way to go. No, you, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't look to see if anybody was chewing gum, passing notes or doing any of those things that we should not do in class. You all were very attentive students, good job. And uh, we'll take a couple of minutes and uh, we've got a few more minutes here. If, if people have any particular questions about this or anything else, we can spend some time talking about them. So if you have, um, you can say something on chat. Give me one second, David, and I'm going to take people, allow them to come off mute. So, okay, uh, you can unmute yourself now to ask a question. Perfect, and David, I have... Go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so, David, then all of these, I, I know you have an extensive repertoire, a library of material. Um, how relevant that would be to us, my question is, if it is very relevant when, and when we're dealing with a sophisticated market, say if we're calling up a, a natural a holistic health practitioner and their MDs and uh, we want to you know, really give them uh, 
some research to really dial into the space to see if that's really the move that they want to make. Obviously, we have these two journals now, so we'll definitely use that. Um, anything else that you may have that we can have? Well, I can tell you this, Nicholas, that um, at the end of the day, anything, and you could go to pubmed.gov, mm -hmm. anything that refers to NERF2 activation and the benefits of NERF2 activation, okay? In fact, you could just Google benefits of NERF2. Anything okay. that applies to NERF2, guess what? Applies to us because we are, whether we did the studies ourselves or not, we know that we are a, a, a very powerful NERF2 activator. We've proven that. So if there's anything out there that talks about the benefits of NERF2, it applies. Um, and so the, one, the good news is, and, and my advice would be this, what I tell other people myself, you don't have to believe me. Here's the study. You don't have to believe me. <laughs> read, right. read this and then let's talk. And so, um, in fact, I wouldn't. Um, I, to me, it's fun, but um, there are, it, knowing chapter and verse about all this stuff is not important to your business. It really isn't. What, what is important to your business is that people know that you believe that this is real. And that they oh, can, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, that's that's the important thing. That's really mm -hmm. what all this is meant to do is, again, I know it's really difficult. You know, I mean, you know, I see I see uh, Colleen sure. Durfee on the on the thing tonight. She knows that she's one of my heroes. And I know that how hard it is for her to and others to go out and talk to people about actives, about joining this company, why they should take the products. And so if we can provide her or you or anybody else with the cover with the support, with the, with the lifeline as it is to say, you know, this is really hard. It's kind of scary for me, but you know what? This is real. I'm holding on to something really real. If that's what this is all about, Nicholas. And, and so, yeah, yeah I'd share those things. And um, what we'll also do is we'll provide a summary of, 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 of the um, study to put it into a little bit more, you know, kind of a one pager, so to speak, to talk about, you know, what, Beauty. what it's all about. Beauty. So the way I look at it is when I'm reaching out to somebody, I can grab them and contact them. Now, if I have like a super high voltage, you know, uh, piece back here and I can just touch that, that's enough usually to let them, you know, to give them the electrical charge. Like I'm already naturally passionate about it. I'm using the product and it's working phenomenally. So I'm, I'm giving them already the real deal. Like you, the, you need to try this. So they're, they're gaining that synergy, but then if I can, like you'd stated, have that one, and I do, I have several, we have several, that there's an excellent repertoire, there's a, a, a wealth of resources in our, in our back office, but, but I don't like that word. However, um, to get something very succinctly there to where it's just like, yeah, here, boom, boom, it's just an automatic transference. It's like for a sophisticated market, if you have that on deck and you can just <clears throat> dial that right in there, they're like, whoa, okay, whoa, let me, all right. Okay. All right. You have my attention. <laughs> yeah. For a minute there, the lawyer part of me was going to warn you, do not grab people and, and taser them. That's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> Don't do that. Nicholas. Not even to get into the company. That's not a good, that's not a good recruiting. Oh, but, that was um, hyperbolically speaking. Let me, let me reframe that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're great. Okay. David, <laughs> I had, David, I had a question. Yeah. And I, I'm going to ask it because, um, you know, when I'm, especially when I am showing to people that was in the previous company, they, and I was knowing there, um, they mentioned something that about, you know, we know the neurotransfer factor active SOD and glutathione. Um, do we know what is the level? So glutathione, the, the we improve or increase when we take genome X? Because I hear there was a product Increase glutathione to 180 percent in 17 hours, and I say, well, you know what? That's a good question because I don't know anything about our genome. Well, it's interesting. Diane was asking me a similar question recently, and um, uh, we did talk about that back in the day. We do know that we increase glutathione is a is a uh, is also a, it's not exactly an antioxidant enzyme. It has some antioxidant properties, but it's it's a very important molecule, mm -hmm. and we do know that um, that Nrf2 is tied to increasing the body's production of glutathione. Um, there was always there are lots of things that were said at LifeVantage, frankly, that weren't exactly accurate because distributors said this, and it was kind of like that game of telephone. It starts at one thing over here and ends up totally different over there. 
Um, but I will say that I don't have anything uh, specifically in regards to genomics, um, in regards to uh, what level of glutathione, it, it, you know, how, how much it might increase it. But I'm not really sure that that's the most important thing. The most important thing is um, we know that, again, back in the day, there was, and that ABC primetime piece talked a lot about it. You know, there was a lot of talk about SOD and about catalase. You know, Dr. McCord doesn't even really talk about that anymore. He talks about NERF2 because it, now he knows that, that those two things were part of the puzzle, but there was now what he would call this whole cascading effect of, uh, of what NERF2 does. And glutathione and, and all these other things are just small pieces of the, of the puzzle. And what he would say is, you know, you want the whole pie instead of worrying about just increasing one piece of the pie. And, and, and that's what we've done. We've increased the, the size of the pie. Does that make sense? Okay. David, I have a question. Yeah, hi. Hi. Jessica um, had her hand up, just FYI. What's oh, that? We'll get, we'll get Jessica Molina after you, Diane. Oh. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Okay. No, I, I don't didn't use my, I just, I thought they just said to unmute, so. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, can you do your your question and maybe later? No okay. worries. Oh, did, okay, so. Go ahead. Go you're, ahead, you're Jessica. Good. Go right ahead. She passed the mic to you, Diane. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You're up, Diane. Oh, I go thought ahead. you just said you wanted to go. No, you're first. fine. I was just making a note. Just, a, just an FYI. You're fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm curious what your comments on this are, David. I have a some distributors and customers asking me when they have health issues such as COVID or if they've been exposed, if they should double up on their actives on the trifecta and especially the genomics. Well, I can say that on the dosing side, there's not been studies. Um, I think that, um, will it hurt them? No. Do we have definitive information that it will help them? No. Uh, I mean, will, I mean, taking it will help them. Will it, will it provide them with double defense to take more than that? We don't, we just don't know. Uh, but it certainly will not cause any harm. Okay, great. Okay? Thank you. Okay, Jessica, you're up. I'm sorry, there's a lot of noise because you know I have three kids and with my husband is four. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I would like to say that um, only for if it, it does help for everybody because I know there's a lot of questions and uh, they're worried about um, how can I tell this to the doctors and, and everything. So if I can help in any way, um, the, the only way that we can know if this works is trying. It's the only way. The doctors don't believe, even the laboratory, the laboratory, laboratories, is that great? <laughs> I'm sorry, the English is not my first you're, language. You're awesome, so. Jessica, go ahead. And, and, and they, they don't really believe even the laboratories. So. The only way that they know what um, medicine can work, they say to the patient, okay, I have this and you can try it because this is new and we, we're going to observe how you evolve. So that's the way I, I call to the doctors. The only way that you can do, that you can know if the, this works is try it. So you shared all the, the, the thing that David said before you share the all the documents and the and uh, all the research but the only way to do this is try it so um even though we have a lot of uh, testimonials in spanish and you can translate it if, if you have somebody and you need um anything you can test me or call me but it's the only way guys so um all the technicals thing um the little thing out like how can I, how many genes, how many, that's not important. The only thing that we need to do is share, 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 share with it. Amen. In, there, there's going to be one, one person that is going to believe in you, is going to try it, and it's going to be awesome because the, that person is going to be, is going to have a lot and a lot of people for you. So that is the only thing that I wanted to, to say. Perfect. I, I, I totally agree. At the end of the day, it's sharing, it's trying, and, um, 
uh, because all the knowledge in the world, unless it's applied, unless it's tried, makes no difference, does it? Um, mm. So I, 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 very good advice, thank you. And we've got time for a couple more, if, if anybody else has anything. Grant's Grant, in the house? Grant, are you there? Grant, did you want to say something? Let me You're check on. the chat really quick, um, David, and see if anyone. Uh, I'm not seeing Grant's question on the chat. So Grant, if you in the in the event, scroll. I, far I see a hand. I see a hand up on, by his name. So I wasn't sure if you want to say something or not. But he might be on mute. Is he on mute? Yeah. His bandwidth may be low. I think he uses his phone for a lot of business. Okay. Um, anything else? Anything else on the chat, Jessica or um, Angie, that we haven't seen yet? Uh, I do uh, not see any other questions. I'm still I'll, scrolling up to the top to see if. I'll add to Jessica's um, uh, expose there. Sure. Uh, so, so I'm in the sales space. We, I'm, I'm moving in a space with a lot of high ticket sales closers, a lot of people who do a lot of cold calling, lead gen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of the things that were taught in the academy that I'm a part of, which is Cole Gordon's Academy, which if you really want to increase your sales, that's the, that's the space to do it anyway, um, is what you lack in talent or what you lack maybe in knowledge, you make up for in numbers. So this is really a numbers game. If we're, if we're reaching out to say 40, 50 people a day, they're like Jessica said, like there's somebody, okay, who he really wants what you have and you may be the holy grail and they may be your golden egg essentially. So just encouraging there um, and following up, make sure like, I don't know how techy everybody is. You can always use pen and pad with a spreadsheet. However, I'm tracking everybody that I'm reaching out to, especially in the online space. And I'm just putting a date and a, a name and interested follow up all of this and that and then very efficiently going through this within a 24 to 48 hour period just for the sake of, hey, did you like it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. just some back-end sales skills there that Perfect. I wanted to share. Perfect, you're right. And uh, anybody that was at active school either this past week or before in Spanish or in English two weeks ago heard that very same thing, that at the end of the day, it really is just getting it out there and that numbers game. And, uh, and many times people that we think, oh, they're gonna for sure accept this won't. And people that we think, oh, they'll never accept this, they do. And, um, and you wouldn't have known about either one of them if you would at least tried and, sh and shared it with them. And so that's exactly that. And I, uh, and I know Jessica believes in that as well. So, well, listen, everybody, it's been, um, I appreciate the time. It's always fun getting together. Uh, Matthew Felton, I think I owe you a call tomorrow, so I will try. And uh, any, everybody else, I hope you guys are doing uh, well. Angie, um, I'll turn it back to you and Stu.